Mr. Seaback, if you could give us just a recap maybe on uh, some of the important programs that the federal government is providing to our citizens. And uh, over to you, sir. Sure, and thanks for having me back on the show again. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is, uh, sir, the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit. So this is the big benefit that's going to be paid to anyone who has... Um, there's a whole bunch of qualifications here for it, but basically it's going to be for anybody who's earned $5,000 uh, worth of income in the last year. It's going to provide $2,000 a month for up to four months. And this is for people who had to stop working due to COVID-19, people who are sick or quarantined, or working parents who have to stay home uh, because they don't have uh, child care, their children are sick. Um, workers who still have the employment but are not being paid uh, because there's sufficient, uh, not sufficient work, and it's also for uh, self-employed individuals. So it's a pretty broad application, and the important thing I want to say is not all the details are rolled out yet. Applications uh, will be able to be submitted on April the 6th, and the important thing I think for people now, if you're listening, is you can apply for this through your MyCRA account. So if you don't have a MyCRA account, now is the time to sign up and get one. And if you need to know how to do that, you can get in touch with my office. Uh, the phone number is 519-941-1832, or you can send me an email, kyle.seaback at parl.gc.ca. And we're putting all of this information up on our website. So the goal is gonna be to have that money delivered to people within 10 days of them doing the application. That's why it's so critical that people sign up for their MyCRA account because it's gonna be the most seamless way to apply for the benefit. Um, I also wanna quickly talk about the announcement that came out with respect to business support. And that is um, the subsidy will cover up to 75% of employees uh, first $58,700 in annual earnings. So it could be payments of almost $850 a week. The details on this are still rolling out, and these are some new ones that we just received. Um, it's going to be for businesses, regardless of size, whose revenue has decreased by 30% or more due to COVID-19. So the other important thing, I think, is that all indications are right now is that this is going to be also eligible for charities and the not-for-profit sector. So I've received a lot of emails from people in the riding asking what help and what support is going to be available for the charitable and not-for-profit sector. My understanding is right now that they are going to be able to apply for this benefit. A few other quick ones just to talk about some finances for people. Uh, and I talked about this last time, but it's worth mentioning again. Um, the Canada Child Benefit is going to be increased, providing an extra $300 per child. Um, uh, which uh, that's again for any family that qualifies for the Canada Child Benefit. There's going to be a special GST payment, which is going to be for um, low and modest income families, $400 for individuals, $600 for households. And you're also going to uh, defer uh, your tax filing until June 1st. One other quick thing to mention, I've had emails on this from people as well. Uh, are businesses able to defer HST payments? And yes, the answer is yes. Just like you can defer paying your tax installments if you're a business, you're also going to be able to defer your HST payments. So the goal here is going to be to keep as much money uh, in the pockets of business so that they can pay their employees, pay rent, uh, pay their mortgage, whatever else. I think those are the real uh, big sort of updates and things that are going on right now for support for individuals. And I would just reiterate uh, to people, I know how hard this um, uh, social distancing is, uh, but everyone's doing it and we have to keep doing it. All indications are that it's working uh, and it's gonna help keep us all safe in the long run. And that's, that's my quick update from last week. Very good. So, what, what I'm taking out of both uh, Minister Jones and Mr. Seaback's uh, reports is uh, cash is king. Uh, they're trying to allow everybody to keep as much money in their pockets as possible uh, for essential uh, purchases like food and, and your rent and things like that. 
So uh, thank you to both levels of, uh, of government, provincial and federal, for recognizing that and uh, uh, letting uh, people defer certain payments um, without penalty. So very good. Um, any questions from um, any of our panelists for Mr. Seaback? Uh, thanks, Your Worship. I do have one, uh, Kyle, if you don't mind. I, I've had a couple of uh, residents ask me uh, questions regarding folks who have multiple incomes. I have one gentleman who has uh, two different sources of income. One of those sources is essentially shut down and the other is not. But that does mean a substantial reduction in his gen income generally. Uh, is he able to still qualify for the emergency uh, benefit? So those all the, yeah, so we still don't have all the details, but my understanding really is this. If you've suffered a loss of income, uh, you're gonna be able to apply. Um, I wish they'd roll out all the criteria faster. Uh, they haven't. I don't have the full rollout details yet, and it's a new program, which is why it's taking the government some time to do it. Once I do have the details, uh, I will be putting them out, and I think that person is going to qualify. That's great. Thanks very much, Kyle. I just wanted to make one more comment, uh, Ward, right back to um, you know internet and, and cellular um, coverage. Something that I haven't seen um, the upper levels of government talk about was uh, relaxation of uh, payments on uh, on your cell phone bills. Um, right now, the cell phone is the uh, communication tool where we are getting all of our information from the various levels of government. In fact, uh, it's the contact uh, with families now, and it's also uh, you know, an emergency uh, call out uh, device as well. So I, I would hope that uh, the upper levels of government could suspend any type of disconnection uh, of, of cell phones in this uh, very critical uh, time in our history. So I, I again, uh, Mr. Seaback, have you heard anything about that? Has there been any discussion at a higher level? You know? So, uh, well, <laughs> As you know, right now, Parliament's suspended, so we're not really able to raise these issues in Parliament. I can tell you this, uh, we've had discussions uh, in our Conservative caucus with respect to this, and it's definitely something I'll be raising. I have a conference uh, caucus call tomorrow, and uh, those of us that have large rural ridings, we know the challenges that are being experienced by people right now, not just with respect to poor connectivity, but lots of overages as well, as everyone has their children home, uh, there's some teachers who are offering some online learning. I've had constituents writing to me with enormous bills for data overages. It's something that we are going to raise with the big telecos. I know that uh, when I have my conference call tomorrow with our caucus, I'll be raising it that we as a caucus should be writing to Rogers and Bell and TELUS and all the large uh, providers and saying you need to waive these overages in rural areas during this crisis. If we're asking people to stay home, they shouldn't be charged an arm and a leg uh, in order to comply with what the government's asking for health. So we're going to raise this very aggressively with those companies. Right. And, you know, depending on how this, uh, in, you know, rolls out in the next uh, two, three months, there may be some real um, learning that goes on online. And uh, for those who are trying to keep their children busy, there's lots of programs available online, lots of educational programs, and uh, the use of data is going to be uh, spiking for sure. So we need to give families uh, some relief on that front. So thanks, Mr. There's a lot of... Mm -hmm. There's a lot of companies that are doing really good things right now. We saw Sunwing was uh, offering free flights to bring, bring people back. Uh, there's companies that are retooling like Bauer and, and many others to uh, manufacture uh, personal protective uh, equipment. Uh, I, I am calling on the big telecos to join in in being good corporate citizens and help Canadians from all across this country, coast to coast to coast. Uh, in rural areas that are getting really, really overcharged for data usage. And we're going to really push them to make some changes. They should be good corporate citizens and make those changes. Right. Good point.